Hi, this is Rene, Blackson Empire, and this is the first tutorial that we're doing to give you guys an idea of um, how we work. And we're going to start off with the Reese baseline. <laughs> Quite interesting. Um, now, we're going to start off with the Surge. I don't know if you guys know this. This is not um, the most famous uh, plugin, like Massive. That probably is the most famous. But it's interesting. It's fairly simple. And um, to be honest, all of these kind of plugins... Uh, are sort of similar. So you have your oscill oscillators right here and um, settings for oscillators. You have your mixers right here and uh, filter one, filter two here, envelopes down there. And you've got your modulation here with LFOs. You can control pretty much everything in the plugin with those. And here we have the routing, of course, and some stuff like polyphony control, polyphony, um, and effects which we don't use. So let's uh, start off with, um, that's what it normally does, just a simple saw waveform. And we're going to use that one. We're just going to click retrigger, so we uh, make sure that it starts at that point every time we play it. And we're going to give it some unison, just uh, to fatten it up a little bit. So that's more voices. And uh, the second oscillator is going to do pretty much the same thing. Saw waveform, retrigger, but we're going to have it in octave down. Uh, just, yeah, make sure it's on. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So that's just to add some uh, some fat to it. And of course we're going to add some sine wave to it, because um, that's good for bass. So, we solo that. That's pretty low. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the basic... Uh, building block that we're going to use um, for this for this synth, for this bass. We're going to turn down the mixer a little bit, but we're going to crank up the wave shaper. So we're going to give it some decibels over here. Now that's more like it. So it's better to, uh, to take it down before you crank it up, because you get a better sound that way. If you keep everything in plus 10, then, you know, it's going to be horrible. Anyway, the cutoff filter, we're just going to have a standard low pass, and we're going to have a little bit of LFO to it. Not too much. There we go. And uh, we're going to make sure it starts at the top there and goes down and up again. We're going to set it. All right, and we're going to add some key tracking because we don't want it to do the same thing wherever we play it on the keyboard. So we want it to go faster if we go up on the keyboard and slower if we go down. So it's sort of to pretend that you're actually playing a sample, which is how the restarted. started. Um, so we're sort of um, pretending that we are doing that. See, just sounds like you sampled it. <laughs> okay, so right now it is um, a polyphonic sound. So you can play multiple keys at once, but we don't want that. We just want the monophonic sound. So we're going to press that and get some portamento in there. So the sounds just sort of glide into each other when you play. All right. So that's about it. Just, um, yeah, store it. All right. Get rid of that. Um, what we're going to do next is add some um, some group channels, and we're going to add uh, three of those. And that may seem like a lot, but this can be used throughout the track later on, because it's um, sort of generic mix buses. What we're going to do is make a low bass, and one for high, and one main bass bus where they all come together. All right. Bring up the mixer. Um, we don't want any sound coming out of the actual synths, and we're just going to use these groups, and we're just going to send them there at full volume. So we have the bass low, we have bass high, and those are going into the final. We're going to add some limiting to that. All right, so we don't clip right there on the channel. And we're going to mute that low end of it now because we're going to focus on the high part. And we're going to make that first, but we're actually going to just keep the low end in there. And we're going to cut that off later. 
So bring up the guitar rig, good and old faithful, and uh, get some compression, I mean some distortion in there. And we're going to get rid of the cabinets, because we're not trying to fool anyone into thinking that we're actually micing some stuff up. So already this should be pretty loud. Make sure it's uh, stereo going in, because this is just going to be the high part of the reso. We can make it as stereo as we want. And we don't have to pretend that it's all monophonic bass and, you know, this is just going to be wide. So what else are we going to put in there? Probably just some, um, some EQ. Make it a little bit uh, smiley, add some low, add some high, and make some weird, accentuate some weird uh, places. This doesn't really matter as long as you make variations of it later on. So... Just make some weird peaks and uh, get that really aggressive sound. Uh, what am I doing? All right, now here's going to be the special thing because we want to split the signal up, even though we're already splitting the signal up. But this is to um, to have basic distortion in your channel A, and then have some different effects for channel B. And um, you can use the crossfader to go between those uh, sounds. We're going to put some some reverb in there. Um, maybe add uh, another EQ, and that's going to have um, a different focus, different uh, frequency that you uh, accentuate than the other one. And we're going to add some some flanger, or yeah, this one. I mean, you can do whatever you want, basically, as long as you make sort of weirder sound than it, than it is originally. So I'm not going to have too much on there. And an extra filter. I'm going to use the, the Profit filter. Right, take that down. All right. So now you can hear sort of the basic sound. <laughs> And then All right. And now we're going to add a way to control to automate because you can automate later on in in Cubase, but we're going to make it slightly more interesting now, sort of more moving. We're going to add an LFO to it. And uh, we're going to assign the LFO to the crossfader. So you can see it, it doesn't go down because it's already on the most downward position, but we're going to actually start it from here so it's, uh, it can only go up, or in this case only go from A to B. And we're going to make sure that whenever we re-trigger it, which is going to be automatic, we start down low and go up. We're going to sync it up to the MIDI clock. So this is about right, I guess. And we're going to assign some more stuff. We're going to do the filter as well. We can have up to four. So why not do some weird thing with the EQ? That wouldn't be normally possible in the physical world. All right, that's pretty cool. So now we accentuate these different points in the frequency spectrum. So now let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Gonna add some more drive to it. Another favorite native instruments driver. That's I think that's free for registered users, but it sounds really good. Um doesn't really I'm just gonna boost it a little bit. Yeah, just to add a little more. <laughs> Alright. Um gonna add some more EQ. Give it some, even though it's already pretty high, we're going to add some, a little bit more, so we can take it down later. Sounds stupid, but that's the way we always work. And, um, going to, of course, take the low end of the frequencies out, just about 500, or lower, no, about 300. And then do the same thing for, low bass 
Of course, it's going to be the exact opposite of that. Just, uh, they can cross over a little bit more. All right. So now we're going to, we have, uh, it's a sub end of it. That's pretty boring and low in volume right now, so we're going to crank that as well. And for that, we usually use um, the, um, what's it called? Trash, right here. And um, get rid of all these other things. Just want the distortion of it. To add some clip control to it, and about six, seven dBs. So no matter what you play, you're always going to have enough bass. So let's see what we have. All right. So I think it sounds pretty good, but it could be a little bit more stereo. So we're going to add an effects channel. And put some of uh, Cubase's um, ping pong delay on there. And it's just going to be really small, so we're not going to sync it. We're just going to add in like 22 or 33, which is what I hope, something we do, like milliseconds. Add full spatial, full mix. And then make sure that goes to the final bus as well. And send it from the high part because it's already really hard in that bus. And this is going to be way too loud, but just to give you an idea. All right, that's loud. <laughs> yeah, just to give it that little bit of more space in the mix. And of course, the good way of doing it this way is you can have your you have your low end um, separated. So if you wanted to side chain it with like a heavy kick, you can just add a compressor and um, just uh, do it that way. So. You only sidechain the, the low part of the bass, and the high part will be still intact whenever the kick in, kicks in. So that's a good way of doing it like this, and it makes sure you. Um, it's a good way to make sure that you can have a clean mix, even though it's pretty filthy. All right. So um, on the main bus, we can also add another filter, and of course, because everything is coming together. <laughs> It will just sound like one channel. Um, and um, you can, of, of course, render this up and throw everything away. But, um, yeah, we just like to keep this live for as long as we can. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, what I want to do next is um, get rid of that one, because we already have the the groups in place that sound really pretty good uh, we can just uh, put in another instrument like the massive and um, try to sort of, sort of recreate the kind of a um, little bit more high bass uh, mid-range I guess that we used to use on the rat and stuff like that for that you're going to need just shorter notes but the principle is the same we just uh yeah, I'm sure you're all familiar with this one, so I'm not going to explain this uh, this instrument, but uh, just make sure everything goes to uh, the first filter before you complicate things. Put the envelope on the, on the cutoff and uh, also make it responsive to where you play it on the keyboard so it doesn't open up as much on the high end, which is what you want in this case. We're gonna, just going to have two oscillators right here send it both to the first filter and we're gonna put a little bit of unison on there uh, make sure it's monophonic and uh, give it a little bit of glide and we can also make sure that it's a little bit stereo because it's not going to be the, the bass low so it's going to be a little bit more stereo, a little bit more high. Still a bit long, so shorten that up a little bit. And of course, normally you can spend days doing this. I'm going to try to be a little bit quicker than that. And uh, still go.
All right, it's still going to, yeah. So that's just the one mixer, the one filter. All right, that's better. All right, make sure everything is like really short and percussive in this kind of sound. That's kind of sound, not the best riff ever, but <laughs> you get the idea. Sounds pretty interesting. As you can hear, my playing needs some quantizing, but we're not going to do that right now. This is uh, this is it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.